I started doing a video on bellies and you may be surprised to find out that it got to be just a wee bit too long. So I looked at it and decided to pull out all the terminology bits and that is this video. Uh, the rest of the video will be the following one. Hi, I'm Kashmir. And in a previous video, we looked at how the term ballet dance came from danse de ventre, the French term for the willard nail in Algeria. Now, a quick terminology lesson. Belly. Belly is the part from the diaphragm to the groin. It's the front part of your body. It contains your stomach, it contains your intestines and bowels, it contains uh, all your abdominal muscles, and if you're a woman, it contains your uterus. That is your belly. Your abdominals are the muscles, muscles of the abdomen. Now, there are, there are superficial and deep muscles, and there's a lot of them, but the three most common ones that people know about are the rectus abdominals, sometimes called the six-pack, so they go on the outside. You have two lots of different uh, up and down uh, obliques, and then underneath that, you have the TAs, the transverse abdominis. So those are the ones that people most commonly know about, but there's plenty of others. And finally, the word stomach. Stomach is the organ that digests your food. If people are looking at your stomach, you have a medical emergency. So abdominals. Your abdominals can be actually used to generate movements in the hips, especially in modern belly dance. Now, in the old style of folkloric belly dance, this didn't happen so much. They used the legs to move the hips around. And there's a number of reasons why this has changed. Another piece of mislabeling is to say that it's muscular as opposed to skeletal. No. If you're using your legs, you're using the muscles in your legs to move your hips. You cannot have skeletal movement without muscles, okay? Bones do not move without muscles contracting. So you can actually move your hips either by generating your legs, moving your legs around, and, and your hips will actually follow on top, or you can actually do it by using ab abdominals themselves. For example, if you look at something like a hip rock or piston hips where you're going up and down vertically, you can do this by, by straightening and, uh, and bending your legs, and this will make your hips go up and down. Or you can do the same thing by contracting your obliques and your um, QLs at the back there. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, one is it gives you, um, it gives you, once you learn to do it, it gives you more control and it gives you a very gooey feel to it. It looks really, really nice. Next, it actually helps with the isolation. So you can have your abs doing your, your hip work and then your legs can do the fancy footwork. So one of the things about the old style um, belly dance is they did very little footwork. They basically stayed in spot. So they didn't need to be able to split it up like that. But now with modern belly dance, we do all sorts of really tricky footwork and, and, and floor patterns. So it helps to have the two separated. And finally, the case of safety. So for example, take a, a backwards figure eight. If you do it using your legs to push your, your hips around, what you'll actually get is your knees squinting. If you do this with your abs, your knees will continue to face forward over your feet, like you're told uh, all the time, to keep safe. So that's three reasons for using your abdominal muscles to generate your hip movements. So that's it. The following video will be the belly and belly dance video, which will be published the week after this one is. Thank you.